But first, I have often been lambasted for calling climate change a hoax. You climate denier, shrieked the hysterical lovies who would happily burn at the stake anyone who doesn't believe in their precious religion of global warming, if they were allowed to. And herein lies the problem. Belief in climate change, like in all religions, must be absolute. You have to believe the whole lot of it, the whole shebang. Otherwise, it doesn't add up. So, you first have to believe that the planet is heating up. Then you have to believe that the burning of fossil fuels and man-made carbon dioxide emissions is what's responsible for that warming. Then you have to believe that future warming will destroy our way of life and wipe out ma mankind and all the animals and the rivers will rise and the oceans and all of that. And then you have to believe that the way to solve this existential problem is to cut those carbon emissions. And finally, you have to believe passionately that the way to do that is for the world to invest massively in green energy, also called renewable energy, namely solar power, wind power, biofuels, and basically anything that is not coal. That's the gospel of climate change. And if you waver on any of those beliefs, you are automatically a denier. And that's why I've always been suspicious of those who profess their belief in one aspect of this religion while at the same time getting very rich from another aspect of it. So, I was intrigued to watch a new film over the weekend. It's the latest release from Michael Moore, the hardcore left-wing documentary maker and Trump hater who gave us Bowling for Columbine, Roger and Me, Fahrenheit 9-11 and so on, and who was once touted by the Lefty Time magazine as one of the world's top 100 most influential people. He's a, he's a full-on lovey, don't worry about it. The film, his film is called Planet of the Humans, a gag on Planet of the Apes, and it's directed by arch greeny Jeff Gibbs, an environmentalist and friend of Michael Moore's from way back. But here's the thing. Although it was, re although it was released only this week and has been viewed over two million times, in just a few days, the loveys are up in arms, with renowned climate activist Michael Mann deriding the film as deeply misguided, and such is the lefty outrage that it has already been cancelled by one of its distributors, who cites misinformation in the film. Funny they never did that with Al Gore's movies. You see, this radical left-wing film has done the unthinkable. It has slayed one of the holy writs of climate change, the belief in renewables and so-called green energy. Despite being essentially a paean to the Malthusian creed that humans are destroying the planet, there's too many of us, capitalism is evil, growth and consumption are bad, etc., etc. Planet of the Humans does something truly extraordinary. It exposes the entire renewable green energy ethos as a hoax. It demonstrates what many of us so-called sceptics or deniers have long suspected, that the renewable energy industry is a massive con being played by billionaires and millionaires upon gullible climate believers and that so-called green energy is anything but green. The film debunks them all. Solar power, windmills, biofuels, electric cars, trashing each and every one of them one by one. There's got to be something renewable. So, Glass is renewable. <laughs> Glass is not renewable. Iron's renewable. <laughs> Aluminum, that's renewable. I recycle my, <laughs> my pop can, soda cans. I know it's renewable. Yeah, the problem with all of these materials is that it takes an incredible amount of energy to mine and process all of the materials that go into building something like this. You use more fossil fuels to do this than you're getting benefit from it. You would have been better off just yeah. burning the fossil fuels in the first place instead of playing pretend. He's referring to one of the world's largest solar farms. You'd have been better off just burning coal anyway. What's even more insidious and hideous, particularly if you do care for the beauty of our precious environment, is that the film claims that solar farms, wind farms, biofuels, electric cars, batteries, all that stuff worshipped and promoted by Labour, by the Greens, by lovey liberals, are actually wreaking havoc on the environment. 
the production of many green energy materials and equipment relies, to quote the film, on the most toxic and industrial processes that we've ever known. It was long past time for me to come to grips with the other elephant in the living room, the profit motive. The only reason we've been force-fed the story, climate change plus renewables equals worse saved, is because billionaires, bankers, and corporations profit from it. Now, I do not share many, if any, of the doom-laden, anti-capitalist, hardcore, lefty, environmental, eco-beliefs of the filmmakers, but that is precisely why a film like this is so devastating to the cult of climate change and has clearly put the fear of God into the left. And all those renewables, carpetbaggers and snake oil salesmen, oh sorry, lobbyists. You know, all those politicians, former political figures, wealthy business people, merchant bankers, the sons of millionaires and billionaires, all of whom preach their passionate belief in climate change and saving the planet while they themselves get rich from renewables. The same renewables that Michael Moore's film claims are anything but green. And the film doesn't hesitate in condemning so-called carbon-neutral institutions and individuals alike. Goldman Sachs, Al Gore, Mike Bloomfield, Bill McKibben, Elon Musk and Richard Branson all get slammed in the film. The very same virtue-signalling multimillionaires who are such great heroes of the green left. Well, that's why they're billionaires and you're not. <laughs> the takeover of the environmental movement by capitalism is now complete. Environmentalists are no longer resisting those with the profit motive, but collaborating with them. In Australia, of course, I don't need to name those who spruik renewables the most. They're on the ABC every other day. They write books. They're all over Twitter with their silly little drip codes. They infest our political parties, including disgracefully the Liberal Party still, and they steal your money through higher energy prices and green subsidies and taxes at every level of our political system. Just one tiny example from this week. Had Labor won the last election, they would by now have committed tens of millions of your dollars to investing in electric and hydrogen cars. Yet this week, Daimler announced they have stopped making hydrogen cars because they're just too expensive. And as for electric cars, well, in one of the more amusing moments of Michael Moore's film, the director dared to ask where the electricity for electric cars actually comes from. So what's charging the, the batteries right now? What, where, where, what's the source of a? Well, electricity? here. It's, it's coming from the building. I mean, uh, is it, um, what's our mix of power? Oh, actually, Lansing feeds the building. What's that? Lansing feeds power to the building. So I don't, I don't know. They're, uh... I bet you they're a bit of coal. Oh, they're heavy on natural gas, aren't they? Uh, right now, the car's charging off of your grid. Right. It would be charging off uh, our grid, which is nine, about 95%. <laughs> they couldn't bring themselves to say the word coal, yet it's all powered by coal. Yes, indeed. The film concludes that the notion that green energies will save us is just a delusion. Remember that the next time you hear anyone trying to sell renewable energy as a cure for climate change. I've often said that the ratification of the Paris Agreement was the greatest betrayal of our nation by its own government since Federation. Turns out, if this film is even only half accurate, renewables are equally the greatest betrayal of all those well-meaning but gullible Australians who so earnestly believe in global warming.